Hi, and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do a summary of sequence. Now, you had learned two styles of sequences. The one is geometric and the one is arithmetic. But in order to know the section well, you must be able to tell the distinct differences between the two sections. Now, the first thing you need to remember is that for arithmetic, the test is term 2 minus term 1 is equal to term 3 minus term 2. Whereas in the test for geometric is term 2 divided by term 1 is equal to term 3 divided by term 2. When you are starting sequences, even later when you are doing series, the very first thing you need to do is the test. In some cases, they first ask you to get the first three terms and then you have to do the test. Now, when we're doing the test, a very common error is when you are doing a sum in arithmetic and in the equation, they give you unknowns. So let's take the following number pattern. 3x minus 1, 2x plus 3, and 2x minus 1. Now, in the exam paper, you will always see that the exam paper is set where you would get a question related to grade 11 work. Second difference, if you are not familiar with that work, you need to go to our previous video and learn the second difference. Then they start with questions like this, where they give you unknowns. When you're saying term 2 minus term 1, the most common mistake we get is, when pupils are saying 2x plus 3, that's term 2, then they go into minus and they say 3x minus 1. Now, look at how the error is in this question. If you had to put the brackets, which is correct, then you would end up with minus 3x plus 1. Whereas in if you don't put the brackets, you end up with minus 3x minus 1. So we have term 2 minus term 1 is equal to, again, remember your brackets. If you don't put the brackets on the first term in the equation, it doesn't affect your answer. But if you don't put the brackets in the second term, it will make your answer completely incorrect. So here we go, term 3 minus, you have to put it in brackets, 2x plus 3. So we have 2x minus 1 minus 2x minus 3. After that, it's simply solving for x, which means bring all the x's on one side and solve for x. This is our standard solve for x. At this stage, you should be able to solve for x without me further explaining it. So we have x is equal to 8. Remember, your algebra has to be correct. Once you had done this, this is a grade 10 level of solve for x, where we have x is equal to 8. Now, in a geometric, in a geometric, they would have a similar equation. But it is term 2 over term 1, which means I've got k minus 1 over k plus 1 is equal to term 3 k over term 2 k minus 1. Again, it is advisable that you keep brackets. If you don't keep the brackets, again, you end up making algebraic mistakes. You start multiplying incorrect. How do we solve for k? You're going to say k minus 1 times k minus 1, which is cross multiplication, is equal to k into k plus 1. If you had not put the brackets in, you would have had something like this, k minus 1 into k minus 1, but no brackets, so pupils only do the distributive law, which is incorrect. Therefore, it is essential that pupils write the brackets in both the terms. Now, once we cross multiply, we got an equation. At this stage, we start doing Kiriket 
or FOIL method, which will give us k squared minus 2k plus 1 is equal to k squared plus k. Now, after this, you should be able to solve for x, again, using all your grade 11 work. You would end up with k is equal to a third. If you are not okay with how to solve for x at this stage, then you need to go back to your grade 11 work and master solve for x. You cannot be doing matric work without knowing your solve for x. Right. So in the exam paper, you will see that the first part they do is where they ask you to get an unknown. So either you have an arithmetic or a geometric. So when you have a number pattern, the first thing you do is the test. The test will determine, am I arithmetic or am I geometric? If we were using the following number pattern, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, and minus 8, how do we do the test? We say minus 4, minus, minus 2, which will give me minus 2. Then we say minus 6, minus, minus 4, gives me minus 2. As long as you do 2, then you can already decide if it's arithmetic or geometric. In this case, we know we are working with arithmetic. Let's take the following number pattern. 2, 6, 18, 54. If you do the arithmetic test, 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. 18 minus 6 is equal to 12. So we know that that number pattern cannot be arithmetic. Now we try geometric. Term 2 divided by term 1. So 6 divided by 2, which is equal to 3. 18 divided by 6, which is equal to 3. So we know that the number pattern I want to the number pattern on our right hand side is geometric. If you start the sum and you randomly run with whatever you feel it is arithmetic or geometric and you incorrect, you've lost all the marks. So when you start with the number pattern, we're going to start with our test. The second thing they're going to ask you is get the formula. Now they would use words like uh, get the formula of this following number pattern or find the general term of the number pattern. When we're doing that, we're going to write down our TN, N, A or D and if it is a geometric, it's R. So we know we're going to work with our formula. We're going to fill in the following information. Let's do the arithmetic. It's going to be TN, N, A and D because we are working with arithmetic. So we have a constant difference. We don't know our TN and we don't know our N. But to get a formula, we only need A and D or A and R. Our A is our first term, which is minus 2. And in this case, our D is our constant difference, which is also minus 2. So we write the formula. Remember, these formulas are on your formula sheet. If I want the general formula, I am talking of a TN formula. If you look at your formula sheet, you will see a TN formula, you would see an SN formula, you will see an S infinity formula. But when they are talking of general formula, we are talking of the TN formula. TN is equal to A plus N minus 1 D. So, all we're doing now is substituting into the general formula. You don't need a TN. You need your A plus. You don't need your N, but you need your D. Now, it's a simple case of algebra where you are neatening off. So, you get rid of all your brackets. What you are doing at this level is distributive law. Minus 2 times n, minus 2n, minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. So our final answer is Tn is equal to minus 2n. That is our general formula. Now you would notice that the steps for arithmetic 
is very similar to the steps of geometric. The only main difference is that your formulas you use are different. And then the algebra in geometric gets a bit more tricky. But the method is the same. Let's go to the geometric. We know that 2, 6, 18, and 54 is a geometric. Right. This geometric number pattern, we want to get the formula. Okay. So we're going to start by writing down our T, N, N, A, and R. We don't need our T, N, or N to get a general formula. All we need is our A, which in this case is 2, and our R, which is 3. Then you decide on the formula. Now again, be careful. When I'm talking of general term, I'm using the TN formula. Now I'm being more specific. General term, but geometric. So the formula is TN is equal to A R N minus 1. Now we substitute. So we have TN is equal to our A is 2 times R is 3 to the power of n minus 1. Stop. It is very common where we see pupils join the 2 and the 3. And then they give us answers like 6 to the power of n minus 1. Remember in your exponent rules, you cannot join if they have different bases. 2 and 3 are different bases. If you are not familiar with your exponent rules, you need to go to our previous videos where we had discussed exponents in details. Now, the next question they would ask you is which term is equal to? If I was doing the arithmetic, it would go something like which term is equal to which term is equal to minus 100. Now when you're doing this, the mistake comes in where pupils substitute incorrectly. You need to understand when they say which term is equal to minus 100, are they giving me Tn or are they giving me N? When they are giving you a total value, then they are giving you Tn. So what we're doing is, at the Tn, we are going to substitute minus 100. So I will have minus 100 is equal to minus 2n. Then we solve using our algebra rules, and we've got n is equal to 50. So we know the 50th term would equal to minus 100. If we were doing a geometric question, they will say which term is equal to 13,122. Again, you need to be clear that they are giving me Tn. So we are going to substitute into Tn 13,122 is equal to 2 times 3 to the power n minus 1. Now, when you're doing this, be careful with your algebra. Again, I'm emphasizing 2 times 3 does not give us 6 in exponents. We're going to divide by 2. So we got 3 to the power of n minus 1 is equal to 6,561. Now, at this stage, you must be familiar with logs. Right, let us look at this section that we had previously done. When we have an unknown as a power, and it is not numbers we are familiar with, then we put a log on each side. Once we put a log on each side, we bring the x in front. So to speak, we bring the power or the unknown in front. Once we bring the unknown in front, we get it alone. When we are getting it alone, 
then we're going to say log 7 divided by log 2 and that would solve for x. You must know those logs and you must know how to solve for an unknown when the unknown is a power because this is used in financial math and it is used in geometric sequences and series. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put logs on both sides. Then we have n minus 1 log 3 is equal to log 6561. We will then have that n minus 1 is equal to 8 using the previous rules that we had done when we had solved for log. That would give us n is equal to 9. Logs is not a big section, but you need to know them. Right, the last thing that they would ask you is calculate the 20th term. So, the first thing they ask you is usually get the formula. But in order to do the formula, you have to do the test. Once you get the formula, from that they start asking you different questions like which term is equal to something or calculate the 20th term. Now remember, you need to understand what are they giving us. From the arithmetic, we have that Tn is equal to minus 2n. And geometric formula, we have that Tn is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of n minus 1. When they say calculate the 20th term, they are giving you n. So at n, we are substituting 20. That would give us Tn, which is the total. So Tn is equal to minus 40. Here, on the geometric, we're going to do the same thing. Tn, which is our total, is going to equal to 2 times 3 to the power of 20 minus 1. Usually with geometrics, they have large answers, so we leave it in that standard form. If it can be solved, you write it down. Use your calculator and be familiar with your calculator to get the final answer. But again, I am telling you, usually in geometric, the answers are huge and they would just mark you on the point where you substitute. And if the answer is used, you don't need to write it, especially when it says times 10 to the power of something or it's giving some large answer, then you just write the, you just write till this level. Thank you for watching.